I'm as restless as a willow in a windstorm. I'm as jumpy as a puppet on a string. I'd say that I had spring fever, but I know. The prolific singer-actress Margaret Whiting was probably the first entertainment celebrity I ever interviewed as a cub reporter for United Press International in the early 1960s. She was definitely the first cabaret artist on the original version of this program as Newsweek on Air in 1988. We met several times at various concerts and shows in the years that followed until her death in 2011. And I'm pleased to report that her life and songs will be celebrated this Monday, June 23rd, in a special tribute at the Weill Recital Hall at Carnegie Hall. Titled It Might As Well Be Spring, the program will include more than two dozen of the hit songs for which she was known, including some by her father, Richard Whiting, and the great Johnny Mercer, such as Hooray for Hollywood and Too Marvelous for Words. The show is being presented by the Mabel Mercer Foundation, Cabaret's Keeper of the Flame, co-hosted by our frequent guest, K.T. Sullivan, artistic director of the foundation, and Margaret's daughter, Debbie. And for your ears only, we're pleased to talk about the woman and her music with Debbie Whiting now. Welcome to our show. Thank you so much for having me. Your mother recorded almost every popular song worth singing from the 1940s, 50s, and 60s. Did she have a favorite? Her most favorite, favorite was Someone to Watch Over Me by the Gershwins, but she also had a very warm spot in her heart for My Ideal, written by her father. Margaret Whiting was also the inspiration for a song by her father for the famous child star Shirley Temple, though it had a pretty sticky start. Tell us about the good ship Lollipop. Well, apparently Margaret wasn't really always allowed in her father's studio, but she did uh, burst in one day with a big lollipop, and she had it all over her and her hands, and she went over, and she was about to touch the piano that her father was working on, and he said, get away from here with those sticky fingers and that crazy lollipop. Aha! Great title, because he couldn't think of a name of a song he was writing for Shirley Temple, and it all came together in that moment. Did she sing a lot around the house, or was that just serious business for the stage and studio? She sang everywhere. She sang in food stores, clothing stores, gas stations. She loved singing. What other singers did she like to listen to and work with? Well, over the years, in the beginning when she was at Capitol, she uh, loved listening to Joe Stafford and Peggy Lee. Her favorite singer of all time was Ella Fitzgerald. And then as time went on and the generations changed, she loved listening to uh, Barbara Streisand, Judy Collins and Joni Mitchell, Melissa Manchester and, and Bette Midler. She was very close to her father's sometime collaborator, Johnny Mercer, and got to sing with him as well. Did you get to see him much? Yes, I did. And now looking back in retrospect, I wish I would have paid more attention because if I would have known that uh, all this was going on, I would have paid a lot more attention. What about one of the other singers Mercer was close to, the famous Judy Garland? Well, Mom knew Judy um, for a long time, but it was basically when they were young and both doing studio work, uh, Judy would come over to the Whiting House all the time, and they would sing with Richard and Johnny, and every time Johnny or another one of the great songwriters had a new song, they'd come over to the Whiting House and play, and the two girls would scramble to the piano to see who was going to sing it first. Margaret once wrote that her father's advice about performing was to sing the songs as they were written because the creators worked real hard on them. Did she ever talk about how she approached the material she did? Well, she took great pride in singing the songs that the composers wrote as they were written. All the songwriters realized that Margaret sang the song the way it was written, so they always asked her first to be the first singer to... to uh, to sing their new composition. Besides the songs we've already mentioned, uh, what are some of the others that will be performed at the Wild Hall celebration? Well, we have the whole idea of the show is Mother's Life in Song. So we start with her capital hits, 
in the 1940s and 50s, like Moonlight in Vermont and Might as Well Be Spring. And as we move up, we go into the Jerome Kern songbook and some of the things that she did at Verve. Uh, we have a couple of duets. We have a Bob Hope duet, Ain't We Got Fun. And then as time went on and she moved to New York, she loved singing songs by the new songwriters of that day. And we're talking about the 1980s. So that would have been uh, Rupert Holmes, Peter Allen, people like that. Debbie Whiting will co-host It Might As Well Be Spring at 7 p.m. Monday, June 23rd, in the Wild Recital Hall at Carnegie Hall, 154 West 57th Street in Manhattan. Check it out at MabelMercer.org and MargaretWhiting.com. And so I'm borrowing a love song. Maggie sings Mercer and Whiting, and this has been for your ears only.